DTV neither supports nor rejects the views expressed in this program. Raise people. Meeting people. Today, we practice signing the complete national anthem. I meet a strong woman who flourishes in a dominantly male environment. I'm Romy. Sign name. You're watching DTV. How will you defend yourself when someone is choking you? We meet two photography students. Let's have a look. Welcome to DTV. Thank you. What are the courses the Academy offers? The Jonathan Andrews Academy offers courses in digital photography, photo and video editing, video production, graphic design, website development and also professional makeup. It all started at the age of 12. I took photos with my phone learning how to use my camera and eventually I got used to it. St. Vincent, I was responsible for taking pictures and it was so exciting. Since I was a child, it has always been my aim to study photography. I just love photography. It is my big passion. I'm studying photography because I've always been creative and had a passion for design. I want to be equal to the hearing photographers. I just love it. What does the Academy do to ensure that the students excel in a competitive marketplace? That's a very difficult question to answer because photography is a skill. You do need knowledge, you do need passion as well, and you do need that artistic eye. You need that unique interpretive ability to be successful in the market. Now what we try to do with our courses and this is what makes our training program uh, very powerful and also very popular is that we combine theoretical training with practical application. Tell us about your first studio shoot. Wow! <laughs> when I entered the studio for the first time I really went crazy. It felt more professional, so exciting. It was like, uh, it's the perfect profession. I just couldn't believe I was finally here. I love it so much. The studio was so worth it. I learned a lot, especially with family photos. I just can't explain it. All I can say is I love it so much. What are the best skills you have at this point? Creating a blurry background and keeping the foreground in focus. For example, a picture of children being excited, ensuring that the children's faces are in focus. It's my favorite at the moment.
favorite photos are moving cars and people in front of the lens. Someone standing in front of traffic. I love taking pictures of traffic. Yeah, we actually more like a family, so so it's not rating people individually, and um, to us it's all about passion of what we're doing and 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 really getting into something and loving it. So so you find a lot of students that come here that's got endless amounts of talent, but they don't have the passion for it, or you get people that's really got the passion for it, and. Um, other than that, it's, it's, it's just really getting to know what you're doing and how things work and, and knowing theory. So I think, I think with them it's amazing because, because they've got this amazing passion for photography and art and life, which makes all the difference. How do you bridge the communication gap? I treat all the classes the same. Um, I am slightly more animated when teaching, which helps. Um, I am very passionate when I teach and I think that actually makes a difference to them, difference to them as well because they can see and they can feel the passion. But then we do have an interpreter that helps every now and again because there might be a little stumbling block or some theory that we need to explain and she does help a lot when we actually have to explain things that I can't um, show them or explain to them in, in the way I teach. How do you communicate with your lecturers and students? very difficult to communicate. Usually, we write to each other. How long is the digital photography course and what does the syllabus entail? The advanced section of our course is the applied digital photography section. That's very, very important to the students because this is where all of the knowledge comes together. From where they learn to work with their digital uh, camera, through flash, through studio, which is lighting, the creative elements. Now we arrive at the section where they learn um, about photographic genres like photojournalism, product photography, wedding photography. And once they've completed that section of the course, they have a very broad based understanding and um, applicational abilities in digital photography and also lots of experience, which is very important for when you have to enter the market as a photographer. What is your best photograph you've done so far? My best is a four picture theme. It's my favorite skill. I had to be creative and show what I loved growing up. All four pictures had to be different. The first one could be a portrait. The next one, a movement. And various other perspectives. I learned a lot and want to be like Jonathan. He inspires me. What are your future plans? It has always, even daily, been my dream to be a professional photographer. I want to show that a deaf person can do it equally to a hearing person. This one is my favorite. Studio lighting was perfect. You should teach me. I have so many future plans. First is photography. Secondly, I'd like to have a photo studio, then maybe teach aspiring deaf photographers. I'd love to teach. I know that there are deaf people who want to be photographers. They shouldn't think they can't do it. You can do everything. Don't just sit back. No matter what skill you have, go and learn like I'm doing. This is my favorite one. I've always loved skulls. It looks interesting. The theme is skulls. Nice. nice. It's nice. great. It's great. Three, 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 three. You are watching D T E. Someone is choking you. How do you defend yourself?
In this insert, we're going to be showing you how to get out of a choke. Very often, people assault you by grabbing you from the front by the throat or coming up behind you and putting their arm around your throat in order to try and choke you. And there are several ways that you can get out of this. We demonstrate two simple techniques. One is called the hair gel, where you're quite literally taking a hand and running it through your hair and using your shoulder to take the opponent's hand off your throat. In the other example, where somebody grabs you from behind, we have a technique called the reverse out, where you're grabbing the opponent's arm, turning your head to protect your throat, and reversing out behind the opponent so that you can kick their knee, injure them, and get away as safely as possible. A choke is a very dangerous attack, and you need to get out of it as quickly as you can. These techniques should be practiced as much as possible. We hope you enjoyed the self-defense lessons with DTV. Keep practicing and check DTV's website for more details. Today's lesson will focus on signing the South African National Anthem. Over the past weeks, we've learned each of the verses. Now we're going to put it all together. Try it with me. Is Romy Titus. I've been in the broadcast industry since I was about 19 years old. I started off as a hard news journalist before transitioning to sport, which is what I do now and uh, thoroughly enjoy it. I focus mainly on football. Uh, I'm also a philanthropist, so I run my own charity on the side. And then I started up my own media training company as well. So I upskill people in terms of how to use the media better. So in a nutshell, I'm a media mogul. Tell us about Rian Kreewagen. Rian Kreewagen uh, was the first person I remember seeing on television. And 8 o'clock my dad used to put on the news and in the house 
there would be dead silence because Rian Kreivachen is on the television telling us what's happening in the world and in South Africa. And I thought to myself, if this man can bring the Titus household to a standstill at eight o'clock, he must be very important. And if he's that important, then I need to be just like him so that my dad can bring the house to a standstill so that he could watch me. Good evening and welcome to the News at 7. Good evening and welcome to an early edition of the News at 7. Good evening and welcome to the News at 7. <laughs> Were you a good news anchor? I must have sucked at some point, but I do hope that I've perfected the art and um, that people kind of look back and they're proud. They're proud of what they see, they're proud of what I stand for, and they still want to tune in and see me deliver the news, regardless if it's current affairs or sport. When was your first bulletin as a news anchor? My very first news bulletin, I was 20 years old. Uh, probably from what I've researched, the youngest news anchor in South Africa, uh, Oprah Winfrey was 20 when she took to the airwaves. And so I hold that kind of dear because Oprah and I have something in common. Uh, I have to say I took like a fish to water. Live TV is my drug. Romy, I hope you enjoy yourself with the men of the match on the field. Thank you so much, Becky. Listening to your commentary, there's no doubt that you enjoy today's game. Time now to announce who is our man of the match in this NetBank Cup game. And it's none other than Elazar Rogers walking in. But Elazar, I think matching so beautifully with your green and blue is the blaze of this. There you are. Congratulations to you. How do you feel? I mean, a superb game on your part today. So now we talk to the Magic FC coach Stober. Coach, hard luck for you here today. No, fantastic. Um, fantastic effort from the guys. Obviously, tough playing against Platinum Stars uh, here at home. <laughs> <laughs> when and why did you add sport to your portfolio? I didn't know anything about sport, but uh, a colleague of mine actually said, why don't you come and try sport? And he kind of opened the door and said, I think this is a match for you, and I think this is where you belong. I didn't really take him seriously. I thought, oh, let me try it. I'm always going to do hard news. Hard news is my first love. And then the sports bug bit me, and I just started wanting to know more, to learn more. I sit with the commentators still, and um, because I haven't played sport, I haven't played football uh, particularly, there's a lot that I don't know and that I still have to learn sort of textbook style. So I've got a very long way to go. But I love it. I mean, it's something that unifies a nation, that brings people together. What more do you want? How do your male colleagues treat you in this male-dominated space? I almost always wear pants so that I blend in because if you do come in a skirt or a dress, you stick out like a sore thumb. I try to be one of the boys. Not that I want to be a boy, but I don't want them to treat me any differently. I do what they do. I believe I do it sometimes better than they do it. But at the end of the day, it should all be, we are trying to take the sport to the people, how to do it best. Um, but it's a male dominated industry. And if they can see you crash and burn, trust you me, they'll sit back and laugh. Yeah. <laughs> the founder of Babies Behind Bars. Tell me more. Babies Behind Bars is a non-profit organization and what we do is we look after children who are born to incarcerated mothers in prisons in South Africa, Namibia and Swaziland and our vision is to look after every prison-born baby on the African continent. What the organization does is we ensure that moms in prison 
have the basic needs really to, to look after their babies. So that's enough disposable nappies, food, formula, toiletries, and they live with their moms in prison up until the age of two. So while they're there, we just hope that they're healthy, they're happy, and they're really well cared for. <laughs> Complete the following sentences. Mm -hmm. My first job was... My first job was as a cashier at a sweet store. My worst <laughs> job was... My worst job was waitressing. I didn't really like that. My best interview was... My best interview ever was probably with the president, uh, Jacob Zuma, and then president, uh, the late Nelson Mandela. My biggest boo-boo was? My biggest boo-boo was I swore on air and I was live and I went bright red and I just paused <laughs> for a few seconds and then carried on reading the news like it didn't happen. My future goals are? To uh, get married and have babies. Where is he already? But uh, career-wise, really, to perhaps work for an international broadcaster like Fox or CNN. <laughs>